still won the fight, didn't I? You're strung out and getting sloppy is what you are. But keeping those idiots entertained was what kept the lights on. Not exactly sure what we're gonna do now. To hell with them. More will come. Just need a quick breather and I'll be ready to go. A breather? What? So you can slam more of that junk into your arm now. She goes with you, watches your back. Look, you'd be doing me a favor while I try to get the place back in order. What do you say? Me? And him? Next person that asks me to shag is getting a well-placed kick. If you get my meaning. <clears throat> I'd really like to talk to you. You ready now? Of course. Anything you need. Anything I need, huh? I might take you up on that one day. After Tommy stuck me with you, I was expecting to hate your guts. Not only because you agreed to pick up me contract, but because I was waiting for you to order me around like hired help. Now, so far, you've been treating me like a friend. Hell, you've been damn near nice to me. Now, I don't mean to sound ungrateful, but your kindness is starting to make me wonder if there's anything I learned in the combat zone. It was that nobody does things for other people without expecting something in return. What exactly do you think I'm expecting in return? Who knows? Doing your laundry, taking a bullet for you, hauling your gear. What's the difference? I don't think I'm getting through to you. Let me explain what I mean, then maybe you'll understand where I'm coming from. I spent three years living at the combat zone. Smelled like puke and piss, but I called it home. I was making a few caps, had my own bed to sleep in, and three hot meals a day. Then the raiders took over the place. You know that lot. You aren't exactly what you'd call the gentle type. After they moved in, if you didn't keep looking over your shoulder, you were liable to get sucker punched or robbed. Or worse. Didn't take me long to learn that I had to put my hard-earned caps to good use. Buying friends was essential to making life easy. So, I guess I'm waiting for you to hand me a bill. You know what I mean? You don't owe me a thing. Now I'm having a real hard time believing that. I'll tell you what. Give me some time and I'll think of something I can do to repay you. I'm not a rich girl, but I'm sure we can agree on something. After all, what are friends for? You have time to talk now. Still have something important to say. Of course. What's on your mind? Appreciate it. We've been on the road together for a while. And we've taken some hard knocks. But through all that crap, I notice you've always been sticking by me. You know, watching me back and making sure I don't do anything stupid. I think maybe it's time to tell you a little bit about who you're traveling with. There's no reason for us to keep acting like we're strangers. It would be nice to know more about you. You're saying that now. But when you hear me story, you might regret it. It all starts with two ways of humanity I suppose you could call me parents. I'm convinced I was a mistake, because I can't remember a single moment that they treated me like their daughter. I was yelled at and beaten. Everything I did was wrong. Nothing but a nuisance in their eyes. The whole time I was telling myself that they had to love me, even if it was just the tiniest bit, because they never kicked me out. Then me 18th birthday arrived, and I found out why they kept me around. They slapped a shock collar around me neck and sold me to slavers. They didn't even care enough about me to say goodbye. 18 years of suffering through that shite, and all I was worth to them was a pocket full of caps. My god, I'm so sorry. Thanks. But there's more to the story. It would be easy to blame me charming personality on me parents, but they didn't make me this way. I did. I was with those slavers for five years. Roughest five of me goddamn life. The things they made me do. The way they used me for their amusement. It sickens me to me stomach even thinking about it. But I bided me time and learned to use their own methods against them. Stealing a few caps out of a sleeping man's pocket is a piece of cake. As long as you don't get greedy. I can't even imagine having to go through something like that. You think that's low? Just wait. The story gets much worse. It took every ounce of patience I had. But after five years, I had finally pocketed enough to buy me own way out of there. But instead of heading off to try and repair the shambles of me life, I gave in to me rage and I headed home. You can imagine the look on me parents' faces when I kicked open their door. What you can't imagine is what they looked like after. After I emptied me gun into them. You did what you had to do. Did I? 
When I close me eyes, all I can see is their faces twisted with fear. And then my mind starts wandering and I start judging myself. And it's ripping me the fuck apart. You think I inject myself with all that shite and drink myself drunk because I'm a tough Irish girl? I do it so I can forget and move on with my miserable life. So there you are. The entire flawed package known as Kate. Stripped bare for your perusal. I'm proud of you. I knew I was taking a chance telling you all this. But I never expected you to say you were proud of me. I... I, I think I needed to hear that from you. Thank you. I'm always here for you, Kate. There's nothing you can say that would ever change that. Oh. Uh, I... well... that's... that's not what I expected you to say. Sorry. I didn't realize you cared that much about me. And here I thought I was being stupid bothering you with me problems. It feels good to know if I need you, you'll be there for me. And I'll always be there for you too. Quit stalling. I need you to help me. Please. Anything you need, Kate. I was hoping you'd say that. We're friends now, which means I can trust you with anything. I'm also hoping it means you've got me back, because I need it now more than ever. I'm... I'm sick. And I don't think I can hide it from you anymore. Okay, calm down and take a deep breath. If you're sick, I want to help you. Okay, okay. It's like this. Ever since I left home, I've been using Psycho. I don't know why I'm still taking that crap, but I can't stop. And believe me, I've tried. I can't even go a day without it anymore, and I'm fucking sick and tired of it. I've even been doing it behind your back. Sneaking doses when I think you aren't looking. Worst of all, it's been making me sick. I've been spitting blood and I don't feel right inside. I need to get this shite out of me system before I wind up dead. Tell me how we can clean you up. Well, there might be a way. But it's not gonna be easy. There's supposed to be a vault somewhere out here. A place called Vault 95. I've heard that Vault Tech used it for some kind of social experiment. Stuck a bunch of junkies inside to poke and prod. Well, they supposedly had some special method to clean up those blokes in there. Some kind of a machine or something. If we could get inside, maybe that machine could help me. No problem. We'll get you there. I can't believe how kind you're being to me. Even when I'm letting you down. Look, I don't want you to think I'm some kind of low-life junkie. A stupid girl who's harming herself for no good reason. From one friend to another, all I'm asking is for your help. When you're ready, take me out to Vault 95 and help me put an end to me pain.
Let's go. What is it? Look at all these chems. Psycho, Jet, Hell, it's all here. Why would there be a stash in this vault? Unless, oh, Vault Tech, those animals. Experimenting again, I bet. Looks like they had their support meetings in the overseer's office. Sitting around and telling everyone else my problems isn't my idea of fun.
Hold. This must be it. The clean room. The answer to me problems is sitting in that room, but I don't know if I should go through with it. If you don't go in there, you could die. I know, I know, but what if the psycho's the only thing keeping me together? What if this opens me eyes and I don't like what I see? There were reasons I dulled the pain, things I didn't want to face, things I was trying to forget. I'd rather be spitting blood than relive in the past. We'll face that pain together. You... you've already done so much, but you keep offering to do more. Well, who the hell am I to look a gift horse in the mouth? <sighs> I'm gonna sit in the chair. Whenever you're ready, you go ahead and throw the switch.
Are you all right, Kate? How are you feeling? Strange. I feel really strange. Everything feels... different. Everything feels... clearer. Colours. Sounds. Smells. Nothing is like I remember. I... I can't believe it worked. The cravings, the pain, hell, even the rush. They've disappeared. Was I really that far gone? I'm glad you're all right. I was worried about you. Seems you're not the only one. I have a feeling that Tommy had this in mind all along. Clever old bastard kicked me out of the combat zone so I'd clean myself up and somehow knew you'd be up for the challenge. I guess he saw something in you that I missed. Oh yeah? Like what? You know what I'm talking about. Look, I'm never gonna forget what you did for me today. You stepped up and helped when everyone else cashed out. I know I suck at thank yous, but that's the best you're gonna get out of me. Now how about we get out of here and leave this place far behind? Hey there. I'd still like to have that talk. Do you have time now? I always have time to listen to you, Kate. Good. Because this isn't easy for me to say, and I want to get it right. <sighs> Where do I begin? Did you know I spent three years fighting at the combat zone? Three years of getting beaten to hell by a bunch of losers and lunatics. After the matches were over, I'd spit out the blood, stitch me wounds, and do a couple of shots of Psycho to keep me going. I fucking hated it. I hated the crowds, I hated the other fighters, and I hated myself. I never understood why I put myself through all that. Until now. It was because I was alone. And I think deep down, I wanted to die. I wanted one of my opponents to crush the life out of me, the easy way out. Well, that's the past. You're not alone anymore. Then maybe you know what I'm trying to say to you. My life's been nothing but one huge failure after another. You've heard all my stories, and you know the prices I've paid. There were a few times when things got really bad that I... I found myself staring down the barrel of my own shotgun. I don't know why I didn't pull the trigger. I guess I was praying that I could find a single decent scrap of humanity in this fucked up world. And then, what you did for me back there at Fault 95, it was like the answer to those prayers. That's the first time in my life I fully depended on someone else and they didn't let me down. God damn it, I'm making a mess of this. It's all right, Kate. Let it all out. I'll be fine. I just need to be getting to the point. The longer we've been spending time together, the more I'm beginning to realize what you mean to me. And I'm not just talking about you watching me back or sharing a drink together. I mean more than that. Before we met, I'd never let me guard down around anyone. I didn't dare. But with you, I feel like I can let you in and see me for everything that I am. For better or for worse. Look. I can't go back to the way things were before we met. I won't. But what I need you to do is look me in the eyes and tell me you feel something too. Of course I do. I'm in love with you, Kate. You... you're what? You said... you're in love with me. I... I didn't know. I mean, I felt something between us, but I thought it was something else. Why? Why would you fall in love with someone as screwed up as I am? Because you're special to me, Kate. And I don't think I'd be happier with anyone else. You... you really mean that? This has to be the first time I put all my cards on the table and didn't end up losing everything. You don't know how much this means to me. To have someone special in my life. I promise you, I mean to make the most of it. 